You know what I'm saying? W, uh, no, the next uh, topic I want to talk about is whatever you want to talk about. And I got a lot of recovering addicts. I got police. I got heroin addicts. I got people who got hooked after an injury. I got people who want to talk about talking about. KBET Radio, Matt, welcome uh, to the Savage Nation. W which city are you in, Matt? Uh, Las Vegas. That's what I thought. My, my call screen is supposed to put your city up. But go ahead. What's on your mind? So you didn't uh, go down the uh, socialism road because of your own spirituality or your understanding of God, and there's a link between uh, socialism and uh, freedom of a, of a, of a country. So no, I, I disagree with you entirely. It had nothing to do with spirituality that kept me from becoming a socialist. Because there, are, it just doesn't work. I'm so, I'd like to say yes and fill in the blank, and therefore I become a, you know, in a certain. I, I'm sorry, I disagree with you. That's not why I didn't become a socialist. Although I was raised in such a milieu, I broke free of it when I decided I wanted to be a success in America, and I saw the impediments that were put in my way by the social engineers on the left. That's when the light started to dawn for me. That is when I realized how deadly socialism is. And I'll never forget, as long as I live, a statement that I read from the ACLU, the worst organization in the history of the United States, filled with subversives, who, if I had the power, would be investigated by a federal branch of the government. They would be broken up. They're worse than any criminal cartel ever, ever seen in America. The ACLU has done more harm to this country than all the drug cartels put together. And I will tell you, I'll stick to those words. I'll give you one example after another. This is an unelected government that runs the government. The ACLU needs to be investigated by the new Republican government. They need to be investigated. They need to be brought before a grand jury. And they need to be tried for the crimes they have and are committing. And I will let, lay them out for you. But let me go back because i got to take a quick break. New Ph.D., killed myself, two children, earned it in three years from one of the greatest universities with an almost 4.0 index, wrote books, came out, wanted to be a new professor. The ACLU said some people will have to put their careers on hold so others may advance. Did you just hear what I just said to you? They put morons, morons and idiots ahead of those of us like me who are supposed to be the next generation of college professors. And that is why you have a debased university system in the country today. But that's also why you have a blessed talk radio industry today. Thank you. I'll be back. We are talking about the scourge of drug addiction in New Hampshire and everywhere else in America. The government, of course, is letting it happen by not stopping it. <laughs> they can control the borders. They could give the police the authority to be much more draconian in cracking down on drug dealers. They can treat addicts much more severely than just giving them treatment. But having said that, I want you to understand something. I live with constant pain. I have an injury I never talk about. I don't whine about it. It'd be very nice to be able to take a pill and have the pain go away. Doctors I know said, well, you need to go and get an MRI, you need to do this, because we don't, we don't know what it is. Well, I sort of abated the pain myself and I live with it it comes and it goes something I did through a sports injury I never used medication for it for one reason I happen to have an addictive personality which is why I'm so good on radio I'm addicted to my profession my entire life is my work and that's what I channel my energy into but frankly you just gotta have strength my mother raised me a certain way she knew there was a drug epidemic occurring in America she used to say to me quietly don't you think people who use marijuana and other drugs are weak? She'd always say, don't you think they're weak? She was in her own way saying something. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. 
Donald, please don't go soft because the advisors are telling you to go soft. They're 100% wrong. Going soft is wrong. The people need a strong alpha male leader, and I think you're the only one to win here. Good, and I'm glad you told me that. That was very nice. I, I, <laughs> I'm very glad you told me that. Driving that train, how cocaine. Casey Jones, you better watch your speed. Trouble ahead. Yeah, there's real trouble ahead. Unless we get a conservative in the White House. Real trouble ahead. Eight years of this clown in the White House. Could you imagine what the next iteration of him will do to this country? Whether it's uh, the Harridan or the uh, the commie? Anyway, New Hampshire, that's all you want to know. I don't blame you. New Hampshire, she's in the toilet. The commie's up. That's on that side. On the other side, Trump's smashing the competition by 16 points. His margin is overwhelming. So apparently, you know, when I said don't get soft, because I saw, by the way, what happened is that he was getting softer. The advisors were already turning him into a different person. I saw it happen before. I saw them kill other candidates. I said, don't go soft. And he said, I hear you, basically. And I, don't, I think he listened to me because he got hard. And his numbers are up. I hope he wins. I don't know what's going to happen. Now, there was another thing that was said yesterday during the Trump interview. And incidentally, if you want to call on the issue of diseases without borders, uh, the Zika virus, if you want to call on the heroin addiction problem in New Hampshire or elsewhere, treatment, uh, 855-407-282. When Donald was on the show yesterday, in addition to saying, don't go soft, stay strong, Trump said something that most of you heard but didn't sort of absorb. Maybe Obama doesn't want to defeat ISIS. Did you remember that came out during the interview yesterday? Well, World Net Daily memorialized that in an article, Trump to Savage, maybe Obama doesn't want to defeat ISIS as he analyzed the GOP race on the eve of the New Hampshire politics. And he talked about that, and it's a great article. It's on michaelsavage.com on the top right link from WND. It was up on Drudge for 24 hours. It's not there now, so you'll have to get the original. But the fact of the matter is, this is a big deal. It's a big deal on two levels, and we'll talk more about that on the Savage Nation. He said, let Russia buy some of the bombs. Uh, I noted that Trump has favored making Russia and his president, and Mr. Putin, an ally against terrorism. And he said, well, Putin said great things about me. I look, I know when I'm being played and all, but he said Trump is brilliant. Trump is their real leader and all that stuff, Trump said. And you know what? I accept it, okay? That's fine. How is it that Ted Cruz wants to turn Russia into our enemy number one? That even the nut Bernie Sanders understands that Russia should be our ally. Stupid Sanders is not, by the way. Even he understands Russia shouldn't be our enemy but our ally. Even the commie understands that. Hillary says we should basically go to war with Russia. He, she called Putin Hitler a year ago. Remember how I criticized her for that idiot? Well, Ted Cruz is doing the same thing as Hillary. But you don't want to see that. But you should see that. That's a very dangerous situation. Now let's get down to brass tacks, which is the, the situation in New Hampshire. The polls are still open. They're still uh, pouring in with the pitchforks and the... The, the galoshes, and uh, she's on the way out, at least there. Okay, well, it doesn't really mean that much because she owns the nation. The Democrat machine owns the nation. There are other topics. What did Hillary say to Goldman Sachs? Well, we have that report for you as well. It, I don't know why Goldman Sachs is the enemy, by the way. They're not my enemy. I have nothing against investment banks. I don't know where, where you get this from. This is a kind of a peasant-like hatred of rich people. When did banks become the enemy of America? I don't understand that. Ever since I've been a kid, I put my money in banks. Then I wake up one day and everyone's attacking banks. They're all bad. Why are they bad? Why are banks bad? I don't get it. And when you say Goldman Sachs, I know why they hate Goldman Sachs. Shall I tell you there's an ethnic component to the names? And that stimulates a, an enmity amongst the, uh, let us say, lower classes in America who want to hate a certain ethnic group? Is that as close as I can come to the uh, plexiglass wall? Uh, without offending too many people, because that's what the reason is. What has Goldman Sachs actually done that's so evil? Because I don't know what it is. So far as I know, an investment bank helps businesses get started. Uh, amongst other things, they invest in new companies. Did you know that? <clears throat> so what are you against them for? Because they didn't invest in your company? I don't understand where this comes from, the hatred. So I'm not one of those conservatives who thinks that banks are all bad and that investment banks are all bad. 
or that all hedge funds are necessarily bad. I didn't say any of that. I never did. I mean, there are very good hedge funds, and there are very good investment banks, incidentally. If anyone's not good, well, the government should look into it, not me, because I don't know what all of them are doing. That's what the SEC is supposed to do. That's if they have any oversight at all. And if they don't have any oversight, well, there's a Justice Department. But to generically say all banks are bad and all hedge funds are bad and Goldman Sachs, Sachs is evil, you're crazy. That's childish. It's not thinking. Politico reports today what Clinton said in her paid speeches is, is one attendee said she sounded more like a Goldman Sachs managing director. That came out today. She received $650,000 for, <laughs> for three speeches. <laughs> What you, are you shocked by that? No, she told them they were bad. She went back three times because she told them they were bad and she was going to break them up. I mean, what would you expect to come out? Some secret that you didn't understand? Of course she would say to them, you're all wonderful. I love you. My son-in-law works for a hedge fund. He should only do as well as you. What would you expect her to be saying when it finally came out? So I'm not shocked by this. Of course they paid it to hear what they wanted to hear. That's why they paid her $225,000 for five minutes of speaking uh, and don't pay you a dime. Because you don't have anything that you can offer them. It's called capitalism. And if you think it's worse than in communism, go and take a look at uh, South America. Tell me how that's working out for Argentina, if you think that socialism is the answer. But let's get back to the bigger issue right now, which is not the generic discussion of socialism, but the specific discussion of drug addiction in America. <clears throat> when did it start? How did it grow? How do you stop it? Why is the government looking the other way? These are big issues. And I think we should talk about them, especially with New Hampshire, where the motto, and I'm not joking when I say to you, from Bernie Sanders and Hillary, for that matter, should be live free, get high. Because that's fundamentally what they're saying. They're saying we're going to give you things for nothing, and if you're getting high, that's fine. The worst that will happen to you is you'll go into treatment for two weeks, which we pay for. Then you can go back out in the street and you can get drugs, which you'll pay for. That's all. Let's go to Tennessee. Janine has an answer to the drug problem. Janine, what's your answer? Um, I'm a clean and sober alcoholic and drug addict. Uh, this problem is never going to go away until you tax it, legalize it. They want to depopulate the population anyway. We can empty our prisons. We can get the country out of debt and let everybody use what they're going to use. End of story. Well, I tell you, I disagree with you, and I'll tell you what. There is a difference between legalization and decriminalization. I'm sure you know the difference, right? Yes. Why is there not another solution such as stopping the source of the drugs rather than hitting the offender? It's money, and the only, only way the spiritual drug addiction can be stopped. No, no, wait, wait. Let, let's not get off the track. I watch a show Cops, and sometimes I'm very offended. A lot of times I see cops armed to the teeth picking up some poor bedraggled uh, heroin addict or crack addict is walking in the street not bothering anybody and I saw a man the other day on the cops crying when they threw him to the ground and and chained him like a dog you wouldn't treat a dog like the way they treated him why did they have to take this poor drug addict down like a dog that's what I ask myself he had no weapons he was just wandering around stone you think that I'm on one side when I'm really not on that side all the time you have to understand that I'm a realist and I look at things as they are so the question is why don't they treat drug dealers the same way that they treat the drug taker that's what I want to know Listen, listen, it's a spiritual disease. It starts at the root of crying out to God for help to get off these evil drugs and alcohol. All right, I understand that that works for some people, but it doesn't work for all. It means that you find within yourself the strength to cure yourself. Because by calling out to God, you're basically saying you have the strength to want to be healed to begin with. You're already on the road to recovery the day you start to pray. Do you know that? Yes. Silence. Yeah. No, but it's true. Look, AA has a motto, and I've never gone to an AA meeting because I've never had a, an addiction problem with any drug, to be honest with you, including alcohol. When I drink, I drink, and when I don't drink, I don't drink. But the point is, I've studied AA, and it's basically a spiritual healing in AA, is it not? Yes, it is. It is. But once the person decides that they want to give up the alcohol or the other drugs, that is the first step on their road to recovery, isn't it? In other words, it's an inner decision. I don't want to be an addict. I don't want to be this piece of garbage that I'm seeing in the mirror. I am sick and tired of looking like I look. I'm feeling like I feel. I'm tired of, of hurting everyone around me. I want to get better. That's the first step towards recovery. Yes. Now, why does the government not put that out as a message? 
Nancy Reagan had a statement, just say no. I thought it was a brilliant slogan in her time. Obama's statement is just look the other way. That's all. His statement is just look the other way. Bernie